Such a beautiful night for mid-January. I should be sitting out by the fire for dinner, but I'm really enjoying having a nice table inside Eddie. So I'm gonna eat dinner in there and come back out and enjoy the fire. I can't believe how mild it is out there for mid-January all the snow is gone crazy steak and Brussels sprouts and mushrooms oh beautiful and I wasn't gonna barbecue tonight but I checked the weather tomorrow night it's gonna be like 50 kilometer hour winds so I got a cookbook that my daughter bought me for Christmas and I picked the recipe so I'm gonna make dinner inside Eddie uh, tomorrow night and that'll be wonderful see that but I pretty much nailed that that's perfect oh, man. I made a lot of YouTube dinners that were not worth the effort this one actually was I'm getting better So I'm here mid-January, it's extremely mild, the snow's all gone, it's amazing. Um, and I have pretty much the river to myself, I got to the access point here. I'm just past the flies only section, so I'm going to be using uh, some of my spinning setup this morning, see if we have any luck, and I'll get adventurous and throw some streamers with my fly rod, and I'll try the uh, flies only section later today and tomorrow. Uh, there's brown trout in here. This river is mainly known for its steelhead fishing and salmon fishing. A lot of drift boats um, float through here for steelhead. I love wading fishing, I like walking. It's to me, it's just it's like a hike with a fishing rod. So that's what I enjoy. So I'm gonna just take my time and meander through here and see if we can catch some trout.
Well, home sweet home. Okay, time to get a fire going. Get out of these waders. Pretty fancy dinner today because it's uh, cold and nasty outside. We're going to cook it inside here. Sit back by the wood stove and enjoy an amazing dinner. Wood stove, wilderness, fishing, and a good beer. This has been my dream for as long as I can remember now. Through crazy circumstances, I decided to build a trailer on my own. It's the best thing I've ever done. So if you've been watching the videos and you've really appreciated the kind of uh, experience that I've gone through and you're enjoying them, I really am happy uh, that you're coming along for the adventures. I started my working career way too early. I was uh, in my career at 20 years old put 30 years in and now I'm retiring early but doing all the things that I wanted to do before I started my career so I missed out on it in my 20s I'm trying to catch up on my 50s if you're living vicariously through these videos I'm hoping you're enjoying them and there's gonna be a lot more and the interior of Eddie Eddie is my trailer I actually call it Eddie um, the interior is getting there it's getting uh, completed uh, a little bit more all the time every trip gets a little easier so this is my new sink. This is a temporary countertop that I just used uh, some three quarter plywood I had left over in the garage. This is actually from my pickup truck build uh, years ago. Always keep your scrap plywood. You never know when you're gonna need it. So I got some milk crates in the sinks that I thought would be a good way to keep things organized while I was traveling. And I figured it would protect the inside of the sink. So cutting board, this stuff comes out here. Let's take that out. So I'll give you the full tour of the sink in a minute. Um, it's something I picked up at Costco when I was shopping with my wife. One of the biggest reasons for me building my own trailer is so many things about a manufacturer trailer that I don't like. And most of the time it's the very dinky sinks that are really small and I think very unpractical. Maybe even just messy, but when I do dishes and stuff, I like to have a lot of room. So this is gonna be a nice luxury. Double sink and it's got uh, a drain. It doesn't have any water just yet or faucets, but it does drain. So. I'm excited to be able to use that on this trip. I did not have the room to install P-traps underneath the sink, but they are not really needed with my setup. This simple ABS design allows the water to drain from both sinks down the ABS pipe through a small spout and into a six gallon water jug that I will be using as my gray water catch basin. I do a lot of sub-zero camping and I never had plans to use water storage containers underneath the trailer frame because they would freeze. This six gallon jug is easily removed from its location to be dumped out whenever possible. Eventually, it will be hidden when the cupboards are completed. So now it's time to make some dinner.
wish you could smell this because it smells as good as it looks. Parmesan here, sun-dried tomatoes, coconut milk, bacon in there. Well, if you're going to go winter camping and it's dark at 530, the beauty of having a trailer like mine is that you can cook in comfort and enjoy the finer things that uh, you just can't do in a tent. Oh, mm -hmm. the shrimp are huge. I didn't realize I bought colossal shrimp. And they weren't lying, they're, they're like little lobsters. But they're pretty good. I can see the shrimp done perfectly. I was a little worried about the big ones, but nailed it. Hmm. So I built this to be an all seasons camper. I live in Canada. I want to be able to be out in the woods all year round. A wood stove to keep it nice and warm in here. It's a big enough space where I can stand up, move around, cook, film myself cooking, which is a bit of a challenge. <clears throat> and still get out, get a good night's sleep, get out and do all the things that I want to do and uh, do them for as long as I can. That's the goal. This may be some of the best eating I've done on any trip and it all because of having a comfortable space to work in. So good. Well, good morning. The plan today is to go do some fishing on a remote stretch of river. It's open year round. There's steelhead, salmon, and brown trout here. So we'll see if we have any luck. And because I want to do some exploring, I have my ATV with me for a couple of reasons. First of all, I want to be able to float this river with my canoe. So I want to be able to bring it up and float stretches of it. But if I have a truck, uh, you know, I need to get back to the truck. So um, I want to kind of scout out the area to see if I can leave my ATV in one section and the truck in the other section to be able to get back um, when I'm done floating down the river. So I'm going to be exploring that. I'm also going to be exploring uh, potential campsites. So what I do is I kind of look at Google and look for clearings. I look for those on public land, obviously. And, uh, you know, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. So I don't like to drive uh, my truck and the trailer down these remote roads and sometimes there are dead ends and you don't really see that on google and you you know i could back out i do have a reversing camera on the trailer now but uh you know sometimes it could be a very uh, long and difficult uh, reverse back to uh, where you came from well, in case you're wondering it's like minus eight celsius outside right now and you can see um, down to my wool t-shirt here this trailer is 12 feet by 7 feet, and with the wood stove, it heats up uh, no problem. I considered getting a diesel heater. I had companies kind of wanting to give me one to do a review and that sort of thing, but uh, I don't really feel I need it. I'm, you know, I have a warm sleeping bag, so the secret for me is when I go to bed, you know, I stop putting kind of wood on the fire a couple hours before I want to go to sleep. Crawl in the sleeping bag. A warm sleeping bag is too warm to to get to sleep at first. Uh, but then I wake up in the morning, I'm just, you know, I'm just in a pair of shorts and t-shirt in my sleeping bag. And again, it's cold in here in the morning, but uh, again, I have those fire starters. So I make a quick fire, crawl back in my sleeping bag. And when I see the fan spinning around, I know it's starting to get warm in here. And then I can get out and then I can adjust the fire and crank it up. And again, it's, you know, it's, there's not a lot of snow on the ground, but it's cold. It's windy out there. So it's minus eight Celsius. And I'm having my breakfast in a t-shirt looking out a window at the woods.
So I know this is not the most productive way to fish in January on this river, but my goal in 2023 is to start to use my fly rods more and get away from my spinning tackle and that sort of thing. So I'm um, out here practicing. I know there's not gonna be anybody around and uh, I, you know, I love the idea of catching fish on streamers. I got to do that uh, with some brook trout in Quebec and really enjoyed it. And my goal is to master my fly rod using streamers and I got a lot of work to do, but uh, hey, I got nothing but time. So for me, it's the scenery, it's the challenge, and uh, yeah, it's nice to catch some fish. This is also an exploratory trip. I got my fly rod, I'm throwing some streamers, but I'm also kind of just exploring the area. This is a tributary of the main river, so I like the smaller streams with the deep holes and stuff. So I'm gonna go look around a little bit more, and then we're gonna head back to Eddie. Okay, so I'm gonna head out and check out those campsites and some of the things that I wanted to check out on the trails, pop on the ATV. Just got my fluorescent vest I picked up at Princess Auto just to make things a little safer on the roadway until I hit the trail. Well, simple enough. I plan my trips using Google Maps and Gaia GPS. I find they complement each other well. I find it easiest to use Google to discover the clearings, and then I use Gaia to trace my routes while I'm hiking or on my ATV, and to add waypoints and notes when I'm actually at the locations. I like that I can take photos and add them to my notes in Gaia. The blue line in the Gaia map shows the route that I took on my ATV when I hit the dead end and had to retrace my steps. So I mean, you never know until you go down the trail. I could not get the trailer or the truck through there. Well, that's gonna wrap up this adventure. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe for more adventures. We're just scratching the surface. Cheers.